Well, today concludes the five-day appeal hearing for Shamima Begum. We've been tracking this all week, so it would be a bit weird if we didn't cover it today, wouldn't we? Just in case you've forgotten Shamima Begum, left the UK in 2015, aged 15, to live under so-called Islamic State rule in Syria. This resulted in her citizenship being removed by then Home Secretary Sajid Javid, but her lawyers have argued that that is unlawful, hence we are where we are right now. Joining me to discuss this in the studio is political commentator Matthew Stadler. Matthew, thank you very, very much. Now, you believe that Shamima should be allowed home, don't you? Well, it, this is good. I think it's good TV because we clashed on... Well, we didn't clash, we disagreed on Twitter. Yes. And you've invited me on to yes. your show because we have very different views on this. Yes. That is a good thing. I feel very strongly about it. I know you do in the opposite uh, yes. way. The reason I feel strongly about this is because... Well, for multiple reasons. First of all, she was a 15-year-old girl. She was a child, mm -hmm. right? So she was, in my view, exploited. She, she wouldn't have been able to get into Syria had she not effectively been trafficked. So she was groomed. She was 16 exploited. years old the vote. That's another question for Oh, well, time. hang on a minute. He's I, only I, a few I, months I, off I, that. I, I personally don't think they should have oh, a vote. Oh, OK. Well, you go. You're all right. No, yeah, I don't think they should. Go on. But, OK. OK. Throw, any other questions? Are England no, going to win against America? No, today? because that's relevant, right? Because this is one of the big things, as you know, when people go, well, she was only 15. A lot of those people think that 16-year-olds yeah, should yeah, have the vote. Can't, you can't necessarily predict what I'm going to think. Though, well, you're, anyway, it's so wild. She, she was a 15-year-old girl. Very soon after arriving in ISIS territory, we believe, she was married off to someone. This, to me, is basically child sexual exploitation. OK, so that's point one. Okay. We need to be absolutely clear. ISIS is a death cult, or yeah. was a death cult. It's a jolly good thing that we smashed them, right? They're evil people. And they were doing evil things, in my view, amongst many others, to Shamima Begum. The second thing is, and this mm. is really important, let's say she was an adult for a second when she went. She wasn't. She was a child. Let's say she was an adult. She's our problem. She was born in Britain. She is British. Imagine if a Syrian criminal came over here and did dreadful things, right? Terrible things in this country. What would we do to that person? Well, I think in the first instance, we'd try them under the rule of law. We'd lock them up if found guilty. Yeah. And after that, and this is the important point, we would deport them. OK, well, I, I get that. that. You would agree with I, me. I, deport I, them back I, I to do, Syria. But so why should Syria but, handle Shamima Begum? Well, I, I bow down to the infinite weight of our own intelligence services when it comes to this. And MI5 and the Home Office and all of these people still view her as a potential threat. And so, so why do you know better than our intelligence services? I, I would certainly do not know better than our intelligence services. I'd say two things to that. First of all, there are a lot of threats already in Britain, OK? It doesn't mean we deport people who are here and who didn't go to Syria. you don't Syria. have to invite another one back in if you can help But it. she's British, that's the point. Well, she is anymore. our responsibility. Why should we foist her over onto Syria any more than we shouldn't be able to, to deport Syrian terrorists from this country? If a Syrian terrorist comes to this country, mm. we send them back. Also, just before coming on air, I wasn't able mm. to listen to it, but on a rival station on the BBC... Oh, Apparently, just before coming on air, that a former counter-terrorism chief at MI5, possibly MI6, mm. he argued that Sajid Javid's decision to strip her of her citizenship was politically motivated. Now, let's deal with the politics of it. The politics of it, in 2019, mm. shortly after he did that, overwhelmingly people in this country, according to a poll, disagree with me, they agree with you. 80%, yeah. roughly, yeah. 8 in 10 Britons thought he was right to do so. Doesn't well, he make is a it right. No, I, I get that, but at the same time as well, he is a politician, right? And we have a cause and we have a rule of law, which, which we are working through now. So yes, politician behaves like politician, shock horror, but... We've it, effectively made her stateless as well. If we're going to talk about the law... Good! We've made, we've made her stateless. Well, you say good, but we, if we make people stateless, we are not abiding by the rule of law. And if we don't abide by the rule of law, society for all all of us well, starts well, to this is what, well, no, but you see, the thing is, we are, well, well, it remains to be seen, but as it currently stands, we are abiding by the rule of law, because she's got, she's got joint Bangladeshi citizenship, hasn't she? Well, Bangladesh don't want anything to do with well, that. I'm not surprised. Oh, I'm not surprised. And by the way, it's important, if she did do terrible things when she was in Syria... Which she, she is alleged to have indeed, done. ...indeed, and um, she gave an interview as well, quite recently, uh, after, yeah. after ending up in this camp, in which she said, I think, something along the lines of she saw a head, a he a head yeah, she, in a bin, yeah. something she's horrific, a, she is, and, she, and she didn't bat an eye. Yeah. Look, I'm not defending what she did as an yeah. adult, and, but she should be held to account in this country. Okay, all right. I